what happens to the food we eat? There are many systems in your body that help it move, function, and react to things that keep you alive and healthy. The digestive system's main responsibility is to convert the food we eat into energy for our body to use to perform its everyday tasks. The digestive tract is the main central structure of the entire digestive system. It is made up of more than 22 feet of muscular tubing. The food we ingest is then mixed with various chemicals in the body and separated into useful and non-useful parts. This process can take up to 14 hours. Digestion starts in the mouth. The mouth consists of three main parts that aid in the process of digestion. The first is the teeth, which grind up the food we consume and make it small enough for our body to digest and small enough to fit down our esophagus. Saliva, secreted by the salivary gland located behind the tongue, is the first bodily chemical that begins the breakdown of food. The tongue makes it possible for a person to swallow the food that will soon be digested. The esophagus transports the food from the mouth to the stomach. When a person swallows, the epiglottis closes and sends food down the esophagus where peristalsis comes into play. Peristalsis is a process that involves contracting muscles along the walls of the digestive tract that help push food to their next step in the journey of digestion, which will be the stomach. When the food reaches the stomach, food particles are broken down into tinier parts through the constant mechanical means of churning in the stomach as seen in this clip. Another way the stomach helps in the process of digestion is by secreting gastric juices no more widely as stomach acid. Gastric juices are made up of hydrochloric acid and enzymes, which are simply the chemicals that break down food. The consumed food is churned and mixed with the chemicals for about three or four hours until the food particles are made into a cream-like liquid called chyme. Then, a valve near the end of the stomach sends the food particles towards the liver. The liver produces a chemical called bile, which is stored in the gallbladder and has a very important function. Bile breaks down fats, such as milk and butter, into tiny pieces that our bodies will use as energy later. Now, as we continue our journey through the human digestive system, we end up in the pancreas. Here, the pancreatic duct, which attaches to the bile duct coming from the liver, secretes even more digestive juices into the small intestine. These chemicals work on breaking down the carbohydrates and proteins that one consumes. The pancreas also regulates the pH level of chyme in the stomach. The small intestine, where the major part of digestion takes place, is close to 22 feet long and this is where the food finally mixes with the chemicals given off by the liver and pancreas. After these two things are mixed, the food is now small enough to be used by the body. The small intestine is broken up into three parts consisting of the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Each of these parts plays a specific function in the digestion process. The first is the duodenum, which receives digestive secretions from other organs. The next part of the small intestine is the jejunum. This is where the major nutrient absorption takes place thanks to the tiny finger-like projections called villi covering the inner lining of the organ. The ileum is the bottom part of the small intestine and continues absorption of salts and fluids until the food reaches the large intestine, the last step in human digestion. The large intestine, also known as the colon, aids in further absorption of water, the production of necessary vitamins, and the expelling of fecal matter through the rectum to...